Good morning and welcome everyone. We will be getting started shortly, just allowing everyone a chance to get into the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow, it's a full house. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar. This is great. And the numbers keep climbing. <laughs> this is wonderful. Give it a few more seconds, another Now we'll start. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning, good morning. In fact, I'd like to say great morning to everyone and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule for this third installment of our Saturdays with St. Andrews. Now our first installment covered the application and the admissions process and was very informative. Now last week, we highlighted the tremendous depth and power of our academic program. Now we know that an hour isn't nearly enough time to cover the breadth of all that we do in any category at St. Andrews. But this week, we wanna give you a glimpse of what DEIJ and our diversity education program mean to and for us at St. Andrews. Now, I, we wanna be mindful of the time and, and there's so much we wanna pour into you this morning. Um, so I'm going to be brief. I am fortunate to be able to look back almost 40 years to when the only support, the small group of then minority students, the only support we had was the support that we gave each other. It was at that time that a very young 20 something year old faculty couple recognized that this small group of about 10 of us, we were struggling and we were in such need of adult support. And so they gathered us. I, I remember this day as clear as any day in my life. They gathered us in the comfort of their living room and they shared that they had no firsthand knowledge of how difficult this experience was for us. But they recognized that it was difficult. 
and they wanted to give us a space, a safe space where we could come and we could talk to each other, we could talk to them, and they were there to listen and provide that space for us. And though it was such, supposed to be a weekly meeting, it, it, it probably ended up being more like daily meetings, um, but they were constantly there for us. And they helped us to navigate our lives at St. Andrews more successfully than we would have been able to do without them. Tad and Elizabeth Roach began to do DEIJ work before it was even called DEIJ work, right? Um, and over the course of their 20 years as faculty members and then their 22 years of leading this school, they have made that an anchor to what was so important. And to be able to come and walk, work alongside them for these past 18 years, has been tremendous. And I know many of you have already received word um, that change is coming to St. Andrews. And, and that change, it, it's, it's bittersweet, but we're excited about it because what he has been able to accomplish and, and set as a firm foundation over the course of his 42 years at St. Andrews, it's there and that legacy will live on. And it has enabled this work to grow in such a way that it is only gonna get stronger. And so it is with a heartfelt gratitude, it is with love that I introduce to you our head of school, Tad Roach. So Tad, you take it away. Stacey, thank you so much. Um, lots of amazing memories, lots of emotions and welcome to all of you. I'm so excited about this amazing panel of students um, and faculty that we've assembled today. And, I welcome you and thank you for your great interest in, in St. Andrews. As Stacy said, the work of um, creating um, a new birth of freedom in America has been the passion of my life um, as an educator. I've been lucky enough to be at a school that has supported that dream and has supported that work. And as we understood so clearly this summer, we all have so far to go. There is so much more for us to do but I deeply believe that schools and colleges and universities are the most important places where these lessons are learned and where this sense of understanding and transformation can occur. So what we're trying to do today is to begin to give you a little bit of a sense of how important this work is, how it actually is integrated into everything that we do within the school, the academic program, the residential life program, the arts, the athletics, the friendships, the associations, um, these are all elements of St. Andrews, but they're all tied to our deep belief that the future of our democracy and the future of our world are tied to the deep, the deep need for further understanding, um, further study of our history and further imagination and creativity about the new world that we're about to inherit. So what we read, what we talk about, how we prepare for crucial moments in our nation's and world's history are all very much tied to this desire to create um, a new generation of leaders, a new imagination and new creativity. I'm so proud of the seniors who are on this panel today. You'll have a chance to meet them. And I'm really proud um, of our Dean of Diversity Education, Devin Dupre, who has done such extraordinary work uh, as a student, as our co-president of the school when she was a student, and now as a leader for really the most important program that we do at St. Andrews. So I'm gonna turn this over to her. Um, thank all of you for joining us today. I'm always available to talk, to share ideas, to share books, to share essays on this really crucial topic. So turn it over to Devin right now. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your Saturday morning um, or Saturday evening um, to be with us. Um, I'd like to thank Mrs. Dupre and Mr. Roach for their words um, and also our student leaders who are joining me in co-hosting this event. Um, during our next around 45 minutes together, um, it's our hope for, for us to share with you just a glimpse into the DEIJ work, the diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice work we do at St. Andrews, and to give you a better picture of how we work together to create an intentional, supportive living and learning community here at SAS.
So because we don't have too much time together, we wanna be as intentional as possible um, with that time. So here's a little quick look at our agenda for this morning. Um, our session will be broken up into two parts. So during part one, we wanna do our best to give you just a sketch of what DEIJ work means at St. Andrews. And then in part two, we hope to demo a little bit of what that work looks like. And we hope that you can actually join us in that as well. Um, just as a side note for you, um, we, when we typically talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice, the goal is really to have dialogue. Um, unfortunately, with the format of today's webinar, we won't be able to engage in a verbal exchange, but throughout the presentation, please feel free um, to write comments via the Q&A buttons with any thoughts, questions, or general responses. We're very excited um, to, to read at least what you have to say and hope to incorporate that um, during our time together. So for our part one, um, we'll be focusing in on understanding DEIJ at SAS, but I would first like to start with um, some introductions. So I'll start in introducing myself. My name is Devin Dupre and I work um, as Dean of Diversity Education at St. Andrews. Um, this is my fourth year on the faculty, but as um, Mr. Roach mentioned, I also um, am a former student. Um, so that makes me an alum. Um, if you probably noticed by the names, I'm also the daughter of both an alum and a faculty member. Um, so my roots at St. Andrews definitely run deep. Um, in addition to my diversity work, um, I'm also a dorm parent on Mean Hall, where I live with juniors and seniors. I coach volleyball and I teach wellness, um, as well as advising students and student groups. So I would love now if our um, student leaders can introduce themselves. Hi everyone, um, I'm Amrit Chapman. I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia, and I am a sixth form student. Um, at St. Andrews, I am the co-head of the Student Diversity Committee and a co-head of the Multiracial Singing Group, as well as a captain of the crew team. And in addition to the Student Diversity Committee and Multiracial Singing Group, the other DEIJ um, organizations that I'm a part of on campus are um, the South Asian Affinity Group and Sapphire, which is an affinity group for women of color and girls collaborative. Hi, I'm Larry. I'm also a sixth former. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but my family is based in Hong Kong right now um, at, at St. Andrews. I'm also a co-head of the Student Diversity Committee and a co-head of the Environmental Stewards, and I run cross country. And other diversity work I do at St. Andrews is I attended the Student Diversity Leadership Conference in Seattle last year. I'm also in the Multiracial Affinity Group and the Asian Affinity Group, and I'm also in Girls Collaborative. Hi everyone, um, my name is Anya. I am a fifth former, also known as a junior. I'm from Hamilton, New Jersey. Um, I'm on the SDC, which is the Student Diversity Committee. Um, I'm a dancer here at St. Andrews, and I also do cross country. Other DEIJ work that I did, um, Along with Larry, I also went to the Student Diversity Leadership Conference last year. Um, I'm on the Black Affinity Group, um, Essence for Black Women. Um, I'm on Sapphire, which is, as Amrit said, um, the Affinity Group for Women of Color. And I'm also on Girls Collaborative. Thank you so much for your introductions. Um, so as we get started, I want to um, unpack a little bit what diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice mean. So these four words are often lumped together, but they have four very important and distinctive meet meanings. Um, in our work at SAS, we aim to be as intentional as possible when thinking about and addressing the meaning of each of these words. So this graphic that you see now is one that we often use at St. Andrews when explaining the difference is between diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. And I hope you can bear with me through the baseball analogy. Um, I tend to, to think in analogies as a concrete thinker, so I hope you um, this will be helpful for you as well. So when we think about diversity, right, we're really thinking about everyone who is present, right? So for example, in this graphic, everyone who's present at the game. Um, however, I think it's important to highlight the difference between equality and equity. 
right? So when we're thinking about equality, we're saying that everyone gets the same thing, right? But with equity, we're really looking at everyone getting what they need to be successful, right? Or perhaps successfully watch the game. Um, when we're looking at the word inclusion, right? We're really thinking about belonging um, and also feeling as if you belong in, in, a, in the community um, or the game. So maybe if you have a seat at the stadium, rather than having to watch over the fence, you may feel that you belong and have this sense of inclusion. And lastly, looking at justice, right? We're, we're really searching for the systems and structures that are in place in our society that keep people from accessing what they need to be successful and working to interrogate and then dismantle those structures, replacing them with equitable ones. So diversity is asking us who is at the game? Inclusion is asking, does everyone at the game have a, a ticketed seat? Um, equity is asking, does everyone have the resources they need to be watching the game? And then justice is asking, what is preventing fans from accessing um, tickets in order and entry in order to watch the game? So I hope that clears up a little bit just what those words mean. Um, and throughout our conversation, I hope it's more clear um, around how those different topics or themes um, are incorporated into the work we do at St. Andrews. So what is diversity education at St. Andrews? Just like I said before, diversity is all of the identities, perspectives, stories um, of our members of our community. And what I wanna highlight here is that our diversity is really more than just marginalized or underrepresented groups at St. Andrews. It really is every single member of our community that contributes to our diversity. On the other hand, diversity education is the organic and structured moments that allow us to come together and explore those differences, enabling us to um, collectively engage in community in both an authentic and cohesive way. And really our goal at St. Andrews is to create this best manifestation of community. So we wanna be in a community where every member is valued as their full, true, authentic self and is able to show up every day as their true, full, authentic self. Um, and it's our hope in, in diversity education to be intentional in creating that type of community along with every office, department, student group, organization, on campus because we know in order to make this come to life, in order to bring this vision to fruition, we really need the participation of everyone. So diversity work is not separate work, right? DEIJ work is not separate. While we do have our own spaces and designated times um, to be intentional and engaging in this work, it's really something that needs to happen every single day in every area of our school life. So where does some of this work take place and how does it happen? So our student diversity work takes place in a number of different areas um, across campus and even off campus. So our student diversity committee, which we'll talk a little bit about in just a moment, um, is one of these key hubs where this work is happening in addition to our affinity groups. But there are also several other student clubs and organizations um, that are also working towards this vision, whether it's through a specific lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, or a more broad um, and inclusive um, uh, manners of, of doing so. Um, we also have full community events. Um, for example, our MLK Weekend and Equity Conference that we have yearly. Um, we also have guests and speakers that come to campus um, that are, again, both working specifically in diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice, but also anyone who comes to campus and shares their story, allowing us to understand um, and empathize more deeply with our community members both on campus and our, our national and global community um, is also doing this work as well. Um, and as Anya and Alary both mentioned, there are also off-campus opportunities and conferences for students to attend both on the, the local and the national level. And then this community work is really happening everywhere. It's happening in our chapel program, during our school meetings, when we sit down and gather for lunch. It's definitely happening in the classroom, when we do community service, connecting with folks um, in our local Middletown um, and extended Delaware community. It's happening in our residential life, on the dorms, 
in our athletic program as we're both competing and encouraging our teammates. It's happening in the arts as students are creating um, and, and, and really well, creating things that are meaningful in order for us to connect more deeply, it's happening everywhere on campus um, with intention. So really these both structured moments that are really important, but all of these organic moments that happen every day that allow us to come together more effectively as a community. So I wanna take a minute just to talk a little bit about um, the SDC, our affinity groups and our conferences that happen on campus. So the Student Diversity Committee is really the organization that is organizing the diversity and inclusion related programs for our school. So any student or faculty member for that matter um, can join in organizing the event, but it's these members of the SDC who are elected by their peers to lead the school in this important work. Um, so they are, again, planning both these structured moments like our equity conferences, school meeting announcements, head of school forums where we're having community conversation, but also um, as members of the community in their dorm um, and just as they're moving through life on campus, encouraging their peers to have these conversations and stretching themselves and encouraging their peers to stretch themselves in this area. Our affinity groups are smaller communities um, made up of students connected by a shared salient identity. Um, and in these groups, students have the opportunities to explore their identities in relation to their experience at St. Andrews and the other communities that they're a part of within the national and within a global context. So they really are giving students a space where they can be their full selves, um, supported by people who share these experiences um, to engage in their identity exploration. Um, and while these groups are definitely for the students um, that they serve, they also play a big role in our community as they're promoting awareness and understanding of the diverse cultures, experiences, and perspectives at St. Andrews. Um, so they are led by students alongside of um, faculty advisors. And here are a list of only the, the 14 active groups on campus this year. Um, throughout the years, based on student interest in our population, there have been other active groups as well. So this isn't a total and complete list. And something that I wanna encourage um, all of our, our viewers today is that if there is an affinity group that, has, um, that, that isn't on campus yet, so an identity that you have that you would want to create an affinity group around, you can absolutely do that at St. Andrews. There's always space for as many affinity groups as we need for students to feel that they have a space to explore those parts of their identity. And then lastly, um, our MLK weekend and spring equity conferences are intra-school events planned and organized and host um, for the full school by the Student Diversity Committee. Um, these events typically take place on a Friday evening through a Saturday afternoon and closing with a Wednesday chapel service. Um, and during these moments, students, faculty, um, students and faculty collaborate on developing workshops, panel discussions, activities, and moments of reflection to center our commitment to equity and inclusion and justice. Um, so below you can just read um, some of the past conference themes that we've had over the past um, two years. And um, they've really been incredible opportunities for us to come together, um, both with guest speakers who have come to campus, um, but really giving us intentional moments um, to reflect that then ripple out into the work that we're doing out, outside of these specific moments. So um, while it is important to have these, these central moments, we definitely know it's also very important for us to not only focus on these, these moments, but what these moments can do and how they can enhance our, our life on campus. So I wanna take a moment to pivot a little bit and hear from our student leaders. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you all that I'm hoping you um, can help us reflect on a little bit. So um, my first question for you, um, and anyone can answer this question, why do you do diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice work at St. Andrews? Uh, I can take this one. So um, at St. Andrews, I found that I've, I'm surrounded by so many diverse, open-minded and well-rounded people in my day-to-day -day life. 
And because of that, in my four years here, I've really been able to um, come to terms and understand my multiracial identity in a way that I haven't been able to in any other community I've ever been a part of. And um, so my D DIJ work at St. Andrews has really helped me shape the way I view myself um, in a really positive way. And I do D DEIJ work at St. Andrews because I want to help other students have this kind of breakthrough and understanding of themselves. Awesome, thank you, Amrit. Um, another question I wanna ask is, is there something that you've learned, for example, a big takeaway from your DEIJ work at St. Andrews? Um, for me, I feel like just ever since I came to St. Andrews, DEIJ work has just been broadened in a way. Um, I feel like when you don't really focus on it that much, like you know that diversity and equity, like it's a part of life, but at St. Andrews we focus on it and like, I don't know, I feel like you just learn the importance of it a lot more so you notice it a lot more. And through noticing these things, you notice like how many, like the role you play in it and the roles others play in it. So I'd say that overall, like DEIJ work at St. Andrews just means like having a broader lens and open-mindedness mindedness, and like noticing like the humanity and just like the beauty that everyone has inside of them. Because I think ultimately that's what diversity is. And I don't think if, um, if I wouldn't have come to St. Andrews, I don't think I would have ever recognized that. Thank you, Anya. Um, and then one more question. Um, what, what is a pivotal DEIJ moment that you've had in your St. Andrews career? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, for me, I feel like there are so many moments that just take place on like a daily and weekly basis that it's hard to pick just one. But I think the first moment um, that was really pivotal for me was one of the first weekends of freshman year. We had our first meeting for MRAG, the Multiracial Affinity Group. And it was hosted by Miss Reddy in her living room. And we were all just gathered around, sitting on the floor, eating pizza together, um, and just talking about our experiences. Um, and it just like was the first time that I had really been able to see my multiracial identity as an identity itself, as opposed to being just like two parts of a whole. Um, and even though like we all had experiences that were different in a lot of ways, um, we were also really able to connect with one another. And there were a lot of seniors in that group that ended up people that I could go to um, throughout that year at St. Andrews. So that was really powerful for me. Thank you, O'Leary. Um, so we're gonna take a moment just to pivot now that we've gotten, got a sense of, again, the purpose why we do diversity, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice work at St. Andrews, what it means for us in our community. Um, I'd love to pivot and for us to, to practice what that might look like, um, taking a look at that structured work that I, that I spoke of um, and the, some of the, the activity that we'll actually do together um, is often work that we're doing all early in the year um, as it is very important for us to um, collectively as a community set the tone um, for how we want to navigate um, the school year. So what does DIJ work look like in practice? Um, so the two graphics you see here are um, student developed um, posters that we've used over the past couple of years to kind of guide us both in these structured moments um, when we're having conversations around um, topics of DEIJ, but also the way that we live life here um, as a set of community norms. So again, our efforts, right, are really centered around creating this best manifestation of community in which every member is valued as their true, full, authentic self. Um, so the ways that we do this, right, we seek to be a community of inquirers um, that are constantly, right, seeking to uphold our community norms. 
Um, we're giving each other grace every day in all of our interactions. Um, we're developing proximity um, and we are striving to be anti-racist. So our theme for this year actually is cultivating an anti-racist mindset, community and culture. Um, and through this, and this is the work um, of, of students, faculty and even alums, we developed this framework to supporting individual and collective efforts um, to, to becoming anti-racist and engaging in anti-racist work um, and then furthering advancing again this, this mission of creating this um, best manifestation of community. Um, so this is work that um, both I and diversity education, um, the SDC members as a committee and um, a host of other folks on campus that work um, in diversity specific specifically, or just our community members are, are engaged and committed to, to doing this work um, throughout the year. Um, so for our time together, the rest of the time we have together, um, we're actually going to be focusing on these two themes. So um, what it means to be a community of inquirers um, and what it means to develop proximity. So um, I know this slide is familiar to um, Anya, Larry, and Amrit, because this was actually a slide that was included in an orientation that they did um, right at the beginning of the year that each form had. Um, and one of the questions that we asked, right, um, in that orientation were, what are some of the qualities of a good inquirer, right? If, if inquiry, if inquire is this first step of this model, um, what, what, are, what are some of the qualities we'll need to be um, good inquirers? So um, we, we selected active listening. So being able to know and demonstrate that when someone is speaking to you, that you are listening to them. Um, and some signs of good active listening is your body language, um, using verbal cues. So if I say something, right, you may repeat it back to me to clarify that you're understanding. Um, and then expressive facial responses, right? These are all things that good active listeners are able to display. Um, but in our community, we actually want to take active listening to the next level um, and actually engage in radical listening, right? So this idea of radical, right, and going to the root meaning of, of radical, which actually means to get at the root, right? I want to be an active listener, but I also want to make sure that I'm focusing on the intent of what the speaker is saying in addition to the content of what is being said, right? So when I'm radically listening, I really want to hear... <clears throat> excuse me, not only what you are saying, but what that actually means for you, right? And how your humanity is showing up in this moment. So one of this year's goals for us as a community is to engage in empathetic inquiry, right? This idea of empathetic inquiry. So in addition to radical listening, right? I think our next question is how can we develop our empathetic inquiry skills? So over the summer, as I was inquiring how I could support students in their deepening their empathetic inquiry, I came across this quote by Brian Stevenson. And since his visit to campus in 2017, um, his work has really been pivotal um, and central in, in anchoring really much of the diversity work that we do, in addition to this idea of proximity. So he describes proximity as a pathway through which we learn the kind of things we need to know to make healthier communities. So proximity is a pathway through which we learn the kind of things we need to know to make healthier communities. So in this, he's saying that by drawing closer to one another, right, to really get to know who someone is and developing that proximity, We'll, we'll learn the things that we need to know to make an even healthier community. And I would argue perhaps even this best manifestation of community, right? So in, in doing this work and living this mission, we have to live closely together, which has taken on a new form, right? As we're living in this world that needs to be physically, physically distant, how can we continue to draw closer to one another to really get to know who, who we are, um, in order to make this best manifestation of community. So one of the ways that we do this early in um, our, our time at St. Andrews, specifically working with freshmen, is having as many opportunities for people to introduce themselves as who they are on their own terms. Um, so one of these activities looks like um, 
these circles of my multifaceted self. Um, so this activity is really highlighting the multidimensional aspects of our identity and also addressing the importance of self-identifying. So when we come to St. Andrews, right, for the first time, when you join your class um, on move-in day, there are probably so many assumptions that we have about people based on how they talk or what they look like or where they're from. Um, and it's actually natural to maybe come up with some of those assumptions. But when we enter into intentional community, it's our goal to acknowledge that we may have some of those assumptions, put those aside so that we actually have the opportunity to get to know each other. Um, so this is an example of one activity that we do um, that demonstrates that. So I wanna thank again, our student leaders for, for demonstrating um, how this works by, by, by actually completing this activity. Um, and in the next few moments, I'll have them answer the questions that you see here um, with their own responses. All right, so for my four um, main self-identifiers, I put student, girl, athlete, and multiracial. Um, I thought that these were kind of the four identifiers that I thought of on a daily basis and that I really um, think define who I am in a sense. I put um, female, multiracial, Welsh slash Chinese, agnostic and granddaughter. Um, and like Amrit, those are the ones that I think about the most often. And granddaughter specifically um, ties to one of the identifiers we've talked about in our DEIJ work, which is family structure, um, because my grandparents lived with me growing up and that's a big part of my life. Um, for mind, I put a friend, a black American, a teenage girl, um, and a Christian. Um, the one that I wanna just point out the most is a friend. Um, and I think this is a very interesting way to describe yourself. But I think that through my friends, especially at St. Andrews, since we're all from everywhere pretty much, I think that's one of the best ways how you can learn about diversity um, and all aspects of it. So, yes. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to part two, um, which asks us to reflect on a time where we felt included, excluded or disrespected in relation to one of the descriptors we included. Write one word that describes how you felt in the heart thought bubble, and then reflect on a time you felt proud or respected in relation to one of the descriptors you included. Write one word that described how you felt in the heart thought bubble. Um, yeah, so mine, the first one is a time when I felt excluded or disrespected. This was um, at home. I was in a driver's ed class. Um, my instructor saw my name and asked me where I was from or like where I was really from, where my people come from. And then when I told him that I'm half Indian, um, he proceeded to make racist jokes. And in that moment, I just felt really small, really. Um, embarrassed, vulnerable. Um, yeah, so that was a time when one of my identifiers was disrespected. And then a time where I felt proud. So um, one of my identifiers is an athlete. And so, as I said earlier, I row crew. And whenever I get off the water, get off the herb, I feel really empowered, um, confident in myself. And I feel that um, I can take that confidence into all areas of my life. So that's one of my identifiers that really inspires confidence in me. Thanks, Amrit. Um, so both of mine, or my example kind of relates to both parts. Um, it was when I was the only girl in my advanced physics class last year. Um, I was a junior and everyone else was senior boys. So at first, like all of these people were on dorm together, knew each other really well um, and would sit at their tables together. And then I was sitting at this table by myself. Um, but like really quickly um, as the class went on, like people started coming over and they would sit next to me. Um, 
And I had certain people that would always reach out and like ask if I wanted to study with them or um, we would work together in groups. And by the end of it, I really felt like I was part of this class and we had this really great community. So I think that speaks to one of the questions um, that was just in the chat, which is about how this work is impacting all students. Um, I think it speaks to people being really aware of trying to include people when they might feel not included. Thanks, Larry. Um, my two are kind of connected. Um, they're connected by a thin line, but they're connected. Um, so I wrote that I felt used and um, pretty much what happened was I threw a little party. Um, it was a Saturday night um, and I played some music that I'd listened to at home, um, you know, some rap music, some cool party music and students came to the party, but they only came for like the snacks and they would leave. And then um, when I asked why they said it's because um, they didn't listen to like my type of music. And I felt like they just used my type of music as an excuse almost because um, I came to St. Andrews and I learned all of the music that everyone else listened to. So in a way I felt like there were just two different standards. Um, but on the bright side, um, everyone from Essence, the Black Affinity Group, they stayed. So we had a good time together. And that goes along with my next one. Um, and I felt proud and respected um, because I performed for a Black History Month chapel. And um, at the end of my dance performance, everyone was just like clapping and they were coming up to me and they were telling me um, like, thank you for like dancing. And although I wasn't speaking, I felt really hurt in that moment. Yes, and you were very loud in that moment as well, Anya. Um, thank you for sharing. And now we have our final part three. Um, so name a stereotype that's associated with one of the descriptors you wrote down that's not consistent with who you are and complete the following sentence. Yeah, so mine's related to a very story actually about um, her physics class the same type of thing. Um, I said, I'm a girl, but I am not any less than boys. I think it's just kind of the age old stereotype that girls are less than boys. And um, that's something that I really try hard to, that I notice a lot and that I really try hard to prove wrong and kind of defy that stereotype. Mine um, says I am multiracial, but I'm not less than whole. So um, that relates to the story I was talking about earlier. Um, it's not a stereotype necessarily as much as something I felt within myself that I could only be, I was only like part of this and part of that, um, but not enough of both. And so my experiences with the multiracial affinity group at St. Andrews um, really have helped me feel like that's not true. Um, for mine, I wrote, I'm a teenage girl, but I'm not weak. And um, the, not only am I a girl, but I'm a teenage girl, which means that I'm not fully adult, I'm an adult. So um, especially at home, when I talk to like my uncles or um, just men sometimes, they underestimate me because I'm young and I'm a female. And I feel like they see me as weak or as like less than them or even less educated than them, um, but that's completely wrong. And at St. Andrews, I feel like <laughs> I, this, like this stereotype doesn't even apply at St. Andrews. If anything, I feel stronger here than I do at home sometimes. Thank you three for sharing. Um, I appreciate all that you said. I know in this work, I'm often encouraging us to be um, vulnerable and that that's a challenge by choice. And I think you've definitely stepped up to that challenge today, especially as you're sharing this um, with our participants. So I thank you again for, for your honesty and your vulnerability um, in that moment, in addition to all the work that, that you do. Um, so just a few takeaways, as I mentioned before, this is an activity that we would typically do with our, our, our newest students in the community, um, but there's also so much that we learn when we also engage in these activities with students who have spent some time here. Um, we learn more and more that while 
Um, we do get to know each other well. Um, I often view community as a site for continuing to get to know someone, right? And relationships as um, moments for us to constantly being um, in, in search of who someone is as we're also learning about ourselves and growing and changing. Um, so, so with this work, again, while it is very much um, seeking at looking at our differences and how we can come together more effectively, the root of what we're trying to do is get everyone to be able to acknowledge first at any interaction that they have with another human being, that individual's humanity. Right. And if we're able to lead with seeing someone's humanity, that they are just as worthy as respect and love and success and health and wellness um, and everything that they want in life, if they're just as deserving of those things as we are, that perhaps we can come together and live in a world um, where people can can actually make that that happen, where they have access to those things. So I thank you so much um, for, for um, your time. Again, our student leaders to Mr. Roach and Mrs. Dupre. Um, I'm very excited to hear um, and maybe answer some more questions um, now. I know they've been coming through the chat um, since, we, since we've started. So happy to hear from, from our participants now. So great, thank you guys so much. This has been such an amazing um, time together learning. And again, just scratching the surface of what we do here um, at St. Andrews. Um, so I wanted to get to some of the questions. We had a question and I realized I was responding in chat and people weren't actually seeing the questions. Um, and so we wanna start off with um, Jaya, I believe. I, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, but the question was, does DEIJ touch upon gender diversity and fluidity? Absolutely, we, we do. So um, any, any part of our identities, it's gonna be a very, it, it's gonna be included in, in this work. Um, I'll, I'll speak, um, I guess, on a couple of different levels. So starting on the affinity level, um, we do have an LGBTQ plus affinity group on campus, um, which is a confidential space actually for um, students who identify um, um, under the umbrella of LBGTQ um, A plus. Um, and in that group, um, there are students who identify um, either as transgender or gender fluid or gender non-binary. Um, so it is a conversation that we're having on campus, um, I think both in these structured moments. So in talking about and explaining to people, right? Cause not everybody understands that gender exists on a spectrum or what it may mean um, to be non-binary, for example. So that formal educational piece, so people have the language and understanding of what some of these identities are. Um, and then also in, um, so that's happening on, on the student side. Um, it's also happening on the faculty side. So one of the things that I didn't mention is while students are doing all of this work, there's also a lot of work that faculty are doing um, on their own identity development and professional development in order to show up for students. Um, and then in a series of workshops that we may have during let's say our equity conferences, or if there are students who want to have a wider conversation opening up to the community, that's a great example of what a head of school forum is, where there's a question or a theme or something that's happening in the world that gives folks the opportunity to, to come together and talk about it in, in, a, in a structured, but also a, um, a candid way that there are spaces for that. So um, absolutely we do, I would say more than touch upon it because I want it to be something each, each anything that's important to students, we want it to be regularly um, discussed and, and just as incorporated as any other themes of, of diversity. Um, students, do you wanna say anything in response to that? Um, I'd like to add on to that. Um, my understanding of gender, um, it has transformed since I've come here um, because one thing that you have to recognize about St. Andrews is that if there's a conversation on it, someone's probably experiencing it. Um, so there's always someone you can talk to. And these conversations, they're not just happening when we're in class or when like a teacher's around. Like we have these conversations on dorm. We have them during lunch. We talk about this all the time because we know that students, um, students are affected by like the stuff that we talk about. So um, we, I think that 
everyone here is always trying to educate themselves that way. Um, they are doing their best to make sure that everyone feels included and seen. Great. Um, we had another question. Actually, and was I'm so grateful he shared a, a link. Um, but it was talking about um, you're all probably going to get this, but uh, the NSTA, National Science Teacher Association, recently sent out a message about building an anti-racist science classroom. In the message, NSTA encouraged dialogue about race and bias in science. Um, and daylighting some of the racist history of science and the people that conducted it, not all, <laughs> essentially being thoughtful about integrating conversations about DEIJ, mostly equity, inclusion, and justice within the science classroom. Um, so if we can just talk a little bit about how that is working at St. Andrews um, within that context, that would be great. Yeah, so I think one of the, the great things about our curriculum at St. Andrews is that we um, have the opportunity to be quite inter interdisciplinary in our practices. So um, for example, while many of these topics and themes may seem to live or exist in the humanities, right, in our English and our um, history and, and language courses, um, we have such a, a, an incredible faculty that is so well-rounded that they are bringing themes in their classrooms as well, particularly in STEM. So we've had some really great um, opportunities, not only looking at the historical um, bias and, um, and atrocities, really that took place um, in, in, a, in the science world um, as it had used and, and took advantage of people of color, um, folks who um, have uh, different types of, of, of neurodiversity. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's happened and it's unfortunate. So teaching right on that, that history, um, but also looking at our world today, um, particularly how many people of color and women are underrepresented in those fields um, and using the scientific method to unpack why some of those things may be happening. So really um, encouraging students to engage in this interdisciplinary practice where what you're learning to do in the history classroom, you can also apply in your science classes and what you are learning in your science classes also have an important and deep history that we need to unpack. So um, again, with our faculty and their um, level of expertise and experience, we've been able to have really great moments of, um, of, of looking at the intersections of what students are learning in their different classes through those lenses. And I would only add that one of the things that Dr. Hyde, our um, science department chair, um, brought to St. Andrews during her career, and I was so so excited about this, and I think it is so important, is that we we realized that the the work of the scientific community and the the kinds of internships and the kinds of of uh, summer opportunities or even during school opportunities. Uh, we're really not being dis distributed um, equitably or creatively. Um, and so we created this position for Dr. Hyde and what she does um, as one of her major focuses every year is to make sure that she is um, making it clear to all of our students that there are opportunities for them to do summer work, summer internships or other research opportunities. And the reason we, the reason we created that position is we wanted to to diversify um, the numbers um, of students who have access to that kind of really important research work that can often lead to careers um, in science and in medicine, both in college and in, in graduate school. So that's that's been a really wonderful addition um, to the St. Andrews approach to this issue. Um, and I know from from my perspective as a as an English teacher, we're constantly looking at texts. Um, and essays that reflect on um, the history of racism and, and intolerance and bigotry that has affected um, science and human rights violations as, as Devin just mentioned. So it's pretty integrated into the curriculum. Uh, Larry, you wanted to share something? Yeah, um, I just had a specific example of something that we did do. Um, one of the summer reading books that was on the list, I think the summer before my freshman year was The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which is about um, this woman whose cells, this African-American woman whose cells were taken um, 
without her consent, I think, or I'm kind of forgetting the specifics, but it was going into um, a lot of themes of medical racism um, and the ethics of that. And so um, when, when we got to campus in the fall, we ended up having a book discussion and just talking about all of those themes. Thank you. Now there's a there's a question that um actually it it ties into a, it, two kind of questions that blend in together and um wonderful questions you know how are we gauging the impact this work is having on all students not just students of color um how how do we know that we are actually changing hearts and minds in our entire community um as well as this question, how do we encourage white students, non-POC students to take the DEIJ work seriously and participate? You know, is there a white anti-racist student affinity group on campus? Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna throw, jump in here because this is, there is, there actually are white anti-racist student affinity groups put in place so that discussions that need to be had can be had in safe spaces um, and students can, can, can participate in that. And what I will say is this, this work, right? And, and again, this is sort of a long history of this thing. This work, there was a time where this work was seen as just what people, students of color did, right? It was all on, on, on us to do. Um, and over the years, it has grown to being, this is what St. Andrews does. And this work is a lot like planting seeds, right? So there are some students, some non-POC students who come in and, are interested in doing this work that, that 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 come in and they want to know and learn more. And there are some who are like, nope, that is not for me. I don't have anything to do. With it. I don't, I don't want to know, right? But because it is so interwoven in everything we do, you get opportunity to plant seeds even when people don't realize that seeds are being planted. And I'll give an example of a student. Um, this was some years back who was one of those students that didn't want to hear anything. This stuff, it didn't exist. Everything was good. Everything was equal for everybody. Didn't understand any of this. White student who didn't want to participate, but because we had to participate in things, he was there. Um, you couldn't quite see the seed breaking through the ground by the time he graduated. But when he went to college, things started to change. And this young man became so involved in diversity work at a college level that I had to give credit that that seed was planted and deeply rooted and watered even when we didn't know anything was happening because it is so much harder to do that work in a college setting where you have to actually be so intentional because it's, it's not, you know, the, the, the need to segregate kind of happens in college. It's easy to do that. And so I know it had to be deeply rooted for him to work through all of that and do the amazing work that he did in college. So as a farmer, right, we look at this, <laughs> you may not always see the fruits of your labor, but the seeds are being planted and hearts are being changed. Uh, student leaders, do you have any response to, to that question? Yeah, um, I would say that my concept of, of what diversity means has really changed since I've come to St. Andrews. And um, I think a lot of times when people think of diversity, they just think of like race and gender. Those are the two main things that come to mind. And that's what came to mind for me before I started this work. And I now realize as Ms. Dupre, you touched on earlier that um, everybody has diversity. Everybody has those core identifiers. Everybody has a different background and experience and they all deserve to be heard and understood. Um, and that's something that we really try to work on here at St. Andrews and that especially the SDC tries to promote. And um, to answer the question, how do we know that um, the work is impacting all students? Um, I mean, after we have workshops or conversations or anything, I, I've just seen how much students have engaged in conversation on dorm, on the sports field. Um, it's not always like a proctored conversation where we're doing this work. It's in, it's at dinner, it's at the table, it's, it's all the time. And um, just based on that, I can tell that it's really impacting everyone and everyone is um, really into doing the work and really committed. So. 
Now, I want to be respectful of your time. We said we had an hour. We are willing to, to, to answer any more questions, but we also want to, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, there were some questions typed into the, the Q&A um, that I believe was answered. How does diversity extend to the academics at St. Andrews? Um, and again, our panel last week spoke um, eloquently about that. You can go to our website and see what is being taught and read in, in, throughout our curriculum to see how that's embedded. Um, we talked a little bit, even Amit's last answer talked about how um, DEIJ is embedded into the daily life because we are coming from all different, but we, it has to be because we're bumping into each other, we're living together. And so it just becomes part of what we do. Um, and so we so appreciate you. We, I want to take this moment to thank our panelists. They are amazing. And, and truly, these are just three of the amazing students who are actually committed to doing this work. Um, and and our, our director, our, our Dean of Diversity Education, um, thank her so much for all the hard work that she puts into the program. Um, we want to encourage you to continue to join us next week. Um, we'll be talking, um, as our series continues, we'll be talking about residential life and student life and, and what that means, life outside of the classroom for St. Andrews. So I'll be with you again um, next week. Um, we will go into athletics the following week in arts the week after that, but we just appreciate you so much. There's so much. And I have to give thanks to our head of school, our fearless leader who continues um, and will drive us all the way to the end um, in doing this amazing work. So we thank you for your time. We look forward to you joining. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to contact any of us. We will all be willing to talk um, about this work. And I'm, I'm sure there are more questions, um, but we are here for you. So. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday um, and we look forward to seeing you again um, real soon. And if you have not scheduled an appointment for an interview and a virtual tour, well, we can promise you sunshine, even if it is raining where you are, if you sign up for a virtual tour with us, there will be sunshine on your tour. We look forward to meeting you and, and talking with you on that level as well. So thank you so much and have a great weekend. Thank, thank you all. Everyone.